Kia ora everyone, welcome back to my studio, I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made this diorama which is a tragic love story of Eurydice and Orpheus. Let's get into it. So to begin with I'm going to cut some basic shapes into some foam, some medium density foam that I've bought online and I'm also going to be cutting in some steers. So once I'm happy with those stair shapes, I wanted to create an alcove for Cerberus to sit into so that he isn't sitting too far out into the, into the diorama. And it looks like he is actually guarding the gates of hell or the gates of Hades, uh, which is part of the story. And so once I'm happy with all of that, then I can start gluing it together. What I also did was actually add in some toothpicks just to kind of keep everything in place. And then if there was anything protruding out, I've just cut, snipped those off as well. So I've 3D printed a whole lot of pieces for this diorama, including the two figures of Eurydice and Orpheus, as well as Cerberus. And also there's two pillars that go along each side of the gates, as well as a plinth to go across the top. So I'm actually gonna make some foam plinths for the columns to sit on top of, just to kind of lift them up a little bit. And also that you'll be able to see them better when they're sitting in behind. Cerberus. So one of the new things I'm going to use in this particular diorama is some Sculptor Mold. So I've never used this product before and I've seen it being used on a number of different channels and I've seen people actually even make their own Sculptor Mold type of product. So a couple of hot tips that I've learnt while using this is one is that the curing time is really short. I've heard people say mix in small batches and I was thinking oh yeah it'll be all right that, that's enough but actually I ended up by wasting a bit on my first batch because I just wasn't working with it quick enough so I've learnt my lesson from that so definitely small batches but not just small 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 batches tiny batches what I found was also for this particular diorama if I didn't smooth out the sculptor mold too much it left a really rocky texture anyway So for the gates, what I've actually done is I've drawn out the area that the gates need to fit into onto that piece of paper and I've put a piece of double-sided tape down on the bottom. So as I'm placing the toothpicks down, I can they're actually sticking to the tape and so I can keep them into position as I start to glue some of the cross beams across the gates and some of the diagonal supports. And of course I've got Loki as my little wee helper. He's, uh, he's never far from my side, that boy. Um, so once that's all dry, what I can do is trim off the excess toothpicks and then for some added support, I'm just going to thread some cotton around each of those connected pieces and then cover the gates with super glue just to add some extra strength. And when, I've, when I go ahead and paint them black, they'll look more like iron gates. And that was the whole intent of them. All 
Orpheus was said to have learnt the lyre from Apollo, but to have surpassed his teacher. It was also said that his music could calm even the wildest beasts and control animals and inanimate objects like rivers and rocks. Orpheus was also found to be a companion of Jason in the Argonautica adventure. According to a story, he saved the Argonauts from certain death when he covered the voices of the deadly sirens with the sound of his lyre. So the story begins when Orpheus fell in love with a nymph called Eurydice. They were so madly in love that soon they got married by Herminius, the god of marriage himself. However, at the moment of pure bliss, he prophesied that happiness had an expiration date. Eurydice was a nymph of uncontested beauty, and this beauty did not go unnoticed. A minor god named Aristeus attacked Orpheus and attempted to snatch Eurydice right after the wedding. Eurydice ran into the forest where, unfortunately, a venomous snake bit her and took her life. After Eurydice's death, Orpheus was devastated. He understood that without her, life on earth was meaningless and decided that he was ready to do whatever it takes for his beloved. He then took his lyre and went to claim her back from the dead. In Hades, Orpheus managed to go through the three-headed guardian hound, Cerberus, by enchanting him with his music. He then began wandering amongst the souls of the dead until he reached the thrones of Pluto and Persephone, the king and queen of the realm of the dead. So before I finish off the top, what I need to do is sort out the lighting. What I wanted to do was create a glowing effect in behind the pillars and the header. And so I'm going to achieve that with some with a set of string lights and I'm just going to double them back on each other trying to make sure that the lights aren't all in the one place so I'm trying to kind of stagger the lights. I've got orange lights I would have preferred to have red but so this is just what I had on hand at the time and it works okay I think it uh, it looks pretty good and now I can finish off the rest of the sculptor mold. When they asked him what he was seeking, Orpheus played his lyre and sang. His song was the saddest and the most beautiful song to be ever played in the underworld. Orpheus sang about his love for Eurydice and her tragic death, and then sang about his sorrow and how he wished to get his wife back. Orpheus was successful in convincing the gods of the underworld to return him to his wife. However, Pluto and Persephone asked him to follow one simple rule. Orpheus was to lead the way out of Hades, but he was not allowed to look behind him until Eurydice had left the underworld completely. Orpheus did not hesitate for a second and accepted the proposition. Pluto then presented him with Eurydice and Orpheus began the long ascension to the world of the living. Orpheus managed to remain calm and did not look back throughout the whole trip. However, the closer they were getting to the light of the world of the living, the more enthusiastic and impatient he was getting. When the first beam of light touched his face, Orpheus immediately turned round to hug his beloved. At that moment he realised his terrible mistake. He was standing in the world of the living, but Eurydice was still standing in the dark of the world of the dead. In horror, he took a final look at Eurydice as she was drawn back into the underworld and lost forever. So one thing I wanted to do was make sure that the top of above ground is looks different to below ground, even though both areas are meant to be quite barren and rocky. 
but I did want to make sure that it had a point of difference. So what I'm going to do is just add in some ground cover and I'm actually just going to add in some dry grasses as well just to kind of give it that point of difference. So for Eurydice and Orpheus, I've used Hero Forge to create them because I really wanted to give them some movement to make it look like Eurydice is reaching up to Orpheus as he starts to turn around at the top of the stairs and starts to look back down at her. I really wanted to emphasize that moment. So I've used Hero Forge to be able to position and create these two characters. And for the paint job, I'm just going to use a really simple paint job. I'm still very much a beginner when it comes to this type of painting. And I'm going to keep the colour scheme quite simple and very much uh, Greek inspired. For Cerberus, I've got him from Thingiverse, as well as the two pillars and the header of the gates of hell, which says, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. So once they're all dry, I can glue them into place. One of the things that I noticed as I was putting this together is the underground part of it was really, really dark. And I know it's meant to be dark, but it was you couldn't really see Eurydice at all. And so what I'm going to do is add in some additional lighting. And so I've taken a string of 20 lights and cut that down to four, glued them into place, and then disguised it with some more sculpt mold. And that seemed to work really well.
So one thing I've done is I've created a summary of the story and just written it out onto some pieces of paper. So it reads, Devastated by the loss of his wife Eurydice, Orpheus ventured to the underworld, pleading for her return. His wish was granted on the condition not to look back at his wife until he left. Orpheus, surfacing first, eagerly turned to embrace his beloved, only to realise she had not emerged. Helpless, he watched as Eurydice was drawn back into the shadows and lost forever. One final touch I wanted to create was some chains around Cerberus's neck. And this was to add some, it added weight to this part of the diorama and really connect Cerberus to the gates. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this little project and have learned something that you can actually use in your own projects. So this was inspired by a theme of an upcoming miniature convention that's going to be held here in New Zealand. The theme is what's at the top of the stairs. And as soon as I heard that, this idea popped straight into my head. Although to be honest, the original idea was a four-sided diorama that you could spin around and it would tell the whole tragic love story of Eurydice and Orpheus. But I really didn't think that I would have enough time to be able to finish it or even create it along with a lot of the other different projects that I've got on the go. So I'm also part of the organizing committee to bring the whole convention together. I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to get into all of that. So I'm really pleased with what I've actually created. I think it really does still tell the story and I think it fits perfectly into the theme of the convention. If you're in New Zealand and you're interested in coming along, I'll put a link in the description below. It's going to be held in October over Labor Weekend. It should be a lot of fun. If you've liked this video, hit that like button and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and come along on this journey with me. And without further ado, here's the final result.